Delbert McClinton, good to have you back on the show. Good Welcome to be back. back. You got a new record, Prick of the Litter. Interesting play on words. Have you ever tried to name a band or anything anymore? Yeah, they've all been taken. I'm right, they have. They've all been taken. <laughs> you got to go. You got to so go pretty you gotta deep. You got to go deep. Yeah. <laughs> and I think our title is going to be pretty damn hard to beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you I know. could be wrong. I was wrong once before. Okay. Yeah, that was a long time ago, though. So uh, almost all the songs on the new record you either wrote or co-wrote, uh, a bunch of them with, uh, with your bandmates, Bob Britt and Mike Joyce. Do you guys write on the road or just at home? Uh, both. Yeah? Uh, well, we don't write so much on the road. Uh, I don't know why, but that's never been something that, that's come real easy to me. I kind of got to have an atmosphere to write, and... Being on the road is not the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, is it more like uh, you just invite them over to your house and, and yeah, have yeah, a few we beers. get together yeah. and uh, and uh, and and sit across each other from guitars and try to make stuff up. Yeah. <laughs> is that like one of your favorite things to do? Like your favorite pastime? Because, you know, once you're home and you're not touring, just oh yeah, hang man. out and make stuff up. Well, but also I've got a place in Mexico that we go to. And uh, that sounds, that's where we do the best work. That's, <laughs> that's the right yeah, setting. because, you know, it's, it's beautiful down there, and yeah. we've got this place, and nobody, you know, you can... Best, best thing that I, I've always felt about since I, we've had a place in Mexico is I can go down there and start over. I don't have to be... I don't ever have to be an asshole again. <laughs> All I got to be is a nice guy, you know? Or if you are, people will think it's the first time. Well, I don't even let it go that far. Yeah. I'm just not an asshole. Uh, yeah. you know? I never was much of one, but no, I have I'm been. Sure not. Now, is that a place that's been faring well, your place in Mexico with all the storms and hurricanes oh, yeah, and stuff yeah, like that? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's dead center in the middle of Mexico. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And so that's the right atmosphere where the creativity can really flow. It does quite well, yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've well, always been a songwriter, and I imagine that... Uh, for you, probably, was it, was it Emmy Luke cutting uh, two more bottles of wine? Was that the first time where you thought, man, I could really make a living doing this? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I write songs because I have to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, she had that already in the bag and done before I even knew anything about it. Yeah. That was in 78 or something yeah. like that, right? Um, and are, are you one of those guys who's always sort of listening for... A phrase or a line or a title. Always. Yeah. Words. I love words. You, you keep know. a little notepad or something I, like that? I, I've got stacks of them yeah. in, in a trunk at home that I've carried over. Started out with those little spiral things about that big. My hardest thing was finding a pen small enough to carry in my pocket. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, the little they weren't around. Then, yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, sure, I've been writing things down forever. Yeah. So, so most people know a bunch of your, your backstory, and I don't want to go too, too deep into it. Nah, but they don't know much. Well, well, well okay. <laughs> well, I want to ask you a couple things. Like, okay. for example, one of your first bands, The Straight Jackets. Uh, yeah. what, uh, what were the clubs like in Fort Worth for a band like yours at that time in the early 60s? What kind of places could you play? Well, uh, they were dance halls. Yeah. That's, that's what they were called, and that's, people came to dance. Yeah. And uh, back in, in the early... Or mid fifties, actually mid late fifties, when I started doing it. Uh, if you wanted to play in the dance halls, the beer joints, you had to make people dance. If you couldn't make them dance, you're out. Wow. So uh, we made them dance. Yeah. And we realized that you had to make them dance. So you know we uh, and and besides what we did was what made them dance anyway. So yeah, it's playing rock. And it roll. wasn't like we had to say, hmm, wonder what they want to hear. Yeah. And was it, uh, were the clubs segregated at all? Were there white clubs oh, and black yeah. clubs? Yeah, they were very segregated. Yeah. yeah. So how is it that you guys could then also back up Howlin' Wolf and, and Lightning Hopkins and Jimmy Well, Reed? those guys were brought in uh, to be special guests for the weekend. At the dance halls? At the dance places? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the audience was white, but the artists could be black. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, and what did you learn from those guys? So there you are, you're, you're, you're in this, you know, you're well, in your I late teens. I learned from uh, 
Oh, God, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy the guy Reed. that did Fannie Mae. Uh, Buster Brown. Yeah. Of course, when I first heard that song, I wanted to play his harp part on it. Yeah. Well, the first note that he comes up on the harp solo is not on the harp. <laughs> he hollers it and then plays. Oh. And to find that out gave me great confidence in myself. <laughs> Because you knew you could you do whatever well, it takes. I hunted and bent everything on that harp to every which way I could <laughs> to get that note, and you couldn't get any more close to it. <laughs> so that's something where you thought you kind of like solved the puzzle. You were like like demystifying this thing a little. Well, I, well, of course that's that's of course that could could be called that, but I just wanted to know what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and how, uh, how much preparation did you have to do for these things? So here comes Helen Wolf, and, he's in, and then there's these, this young we band. Were, we were so ready for him. Yeah, time. you knew all the tunes. Well, we listened to all those guys back then as yeah. much as we could. Those guys were on the radio every day. Oh, okay. Jimmy Reed, Helen Wolf, yeah. uh, BB, and on and on and on. They were on the radio. And so there must have been a Fort Worth radio station that just... No, but there was one in Dallas. In Dallas, yeah. And uh, it covered Fort Worth and Dallas. KNOK Radio. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Mounds that. of sounds and stacks of wax for yeah. your listening pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, and they played all the right stuff. Played yeah. It, and, uh, and they played it all day and all night. Who told... Oh, Stephen Bruton told me about that red station. Yeah. I yeah. bet, yeah. yeah. And so you heard all those songs, so you were ready for them. We were yeah. absolutely ready. Yeah. The only guy that we weren't quite, well, we were ready, but we weren't ready for the way he exploded onto the scene. First night we ever played with, uh, oh God, what's his name? Howlin' uh, uh, Wolf. Yeah. We hadn't met him, we didn't have a rehearsal, nothing. And when, when the bar told, the owner says, announce him, bring him out. I did, and he just came running out on the shore and flew down on his back and started spinning around. <laughs> and then he jumped up and he started singing. And everybody's looking for the key and all. And he turned around and said, come on, band. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's Helen Wolf's entrance. So, but we, we pretty quickly got a grip, grip on him because he, I, don't, I don't think he sang more than two or three keys. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. People have a sound. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, you know. That's, that's pretty wild. And then it wasn't that much longer after that. I know you started playing with Bruce Channel. Uh, Chanel. Or Chanel, I'm sorry. Yeah. Bruce Chanel. Yeah. Chanel. That's right. Sorry, man. Bruce it Chanel. It spells Channel. I, I think he got it off of one of them perfume bottles. A perfume bottles, bottle, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bruce Chanel. That's right. Of course it is. Um, but he was, he was like a country Bruce guy. Bruce is tough enough. You know, you <laughs> got to give him something to go with after that. And Bruce McMeems didn't do it. That was, that's his real name. That's his real name. name. Bruce McMeems. McMeems. Yeah. Not much spark in that, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the managers would have had him change his name eventually anyway. <laughs> hey, uh, but he was, he had been on the hayride. Well, he was more like a country guy, wasn't he? He was brand new as what oh, he was new. at the time. I mean, you yeah. know, he, yeah, he had been doing uh, he had been doing Louisiana Hayride, uh, yeah, pretty regularly, yeah, uh, at least for a year or so. That's right. And uh, but Bruce, we were young, man. We were twenty one. Yeah. And then you all of a sudden you have a big hit record. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, I got called. At, I got. There wasn't any place. There was one place in town in Fort Worth to record back in those days, and uh, that was the. Uh, uh, recording studio in the basement of a radio station. Yeah. And the engineer that worked in the place was Bob Sullivan. He had been the Louisiana Hayride audio engineer for the last, and he had more stories. Wow. In Shreveport. So yeah. everybody, Hank Williams. Everybody, Elvis, yeah. everybody. So, you know, I, I met him and I just go to, I had these, I didn't get an education that would be plant me ready to make, you know, I, I, I looked for jobs a smart monkey could do. 
<laughs> I looked for jobs driving a hot shot truck delivery so I could be by myself. Yeah. I don't like supervision. <laughs> and, but it got to where, you know, I'd go, uh, I'd go, uh, I'd go do part of the work that I was supposed to do. And then I'd go down to the studio and sit there and listen to Bob tell stories all day. Yeah. yeah. And that was the education I was looking for. There's a couple of good album titles on what you just said. I don't like supervision. That would be a good one. And it's a love story, right? And, and, <laughs> and then Smart Monkey would be okay, too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> hey, in case you just tuned in, you're listening to E-Town. I'm here with Delbert McClinton. You had some heart surgery not long ago, and things went well, apparently. They did. I fortunately didn't have a heart attack. I had something. We were in Fort something, Florida. I don't know what it was. Augustine, St. Augustine. I don't know where it was, barely into Florida, out of Georgia. And I felt really strange. Nothing like you hear somebody says, well, you feel this if you're having a heart attack. I just felt like something was wrong all over. So I went to the, uh, this was in the morning. Our, our rooms weren't ready yet. So we went out to the festival to set up, get a, you know, unload all our equipment. So, uh, I told the guys, I said, I think I need to go to the hospital. Somebody called the EMS. All of a sudden, here comes this loud ass truck, you know, coming up there. And everybody there, of course, is, is watching, well, what the hell is that all about? Who's dying? And it was me, you know. <laughs> and they came out and they checked me for everything and couldn't find a thing wrong. And they said, well, what you need to do is, uh, if you've had a heart event, you should go to the hospital and check your blood, because if you have, it releases an enzyme. I, I sound like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I do regarding this, because it scared the hell out of me. Anyway, I did, and I did. I had the enzyme, so next morning, they, uh, or that afternoon, they did a cath on me and ran through my hand, Wow, instead of my leg. And I was 95% blocked in the main artery. Hmm. And the next day they cleaned it out. And I feel like I'm 50 again. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you, uh, you have always been a guy who can sing in just about any key. And, and now you're even stronger. <laughs> I, 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 I am. It's <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> Now, uh, I know you work a lot, you, uh, you play a lot. Do you see yourself kind of like your fellow Texan, Willie Nelson, who's seven years older you than know, you, but I, he's I, out there working all the time? I gave up comparing myself to Willie because he ain't ever going to die. <laughs> you know, he is the magi, and I'm a mere mortal man with minimal magic. <laughs> so, you know. But you, but you work. Yeah. Oh, I do. Yeah. I work regularly. Yeah. And uh, as long as it feels good, I'll do it, you yeah. know? I know, uh, I want to ask you just a couple more things before we go back to music. I know uh, Don Imus is one of your biggest fans. People love him or hate him, but has his uh, uh, paying attention to you and your music helped people discover your music, do you oh, think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have people all the time come up and tell me, I found out about you on the Don Imus show. It's interesting, because you know, in some ways these are kind of divisive times, but I feel like you are a guy who can bring people together from any corner of any culture, you know, it seems like you're like a... Well, you know, music can do that, and, 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 uh, and I have done it before. I won't say I can do it every time, but I've done it. Yeah. And it does feel very good. Yeah, I remember Willie talking about on, on E10 one time, he said, yeah, I, I could bring, I, I realized I could bring together the dopers and the ropers. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, so, you see, I was a lot nicer about that. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you were much, much more, yes, yeah. yeah, circumspect. But I don't think I bring the meth heads. You know. No. No. <laughs> because, I, 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 you know, you, you, can, you can see you can the meth them. head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have kind of a, a, a nuclear glow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. I, there's, people are wonderful, and they come out, and they love it, and I love them loving it, and all of yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, how are the cruises going, the Sandy Beaches cruises? You've been doing that for a while, haven't you? I've been doing it for 24 years. 24 years. How many have you been? Jesus. <laughs> Lie to me. Come on. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, these well, are... I'm telling you right now, you're missing the best thing you could do for yourself is to go on my cruise. And if you go and you don't have the best time you ever had in your life, period, I personally come to wherever you are and buy you a beer. <laughs> Look at all these potential customers out here. That's what they are. You don't want a bunch of veterans who've been doing this thing for 24 years. You need some newbies. That's right. You need some fresh blood. This is this people. These are these people. Well, I've, I've done my part. I've just yeah. told them about it. Well, listen, you've been at this a long time, playing songs, writing, recording, 60 years or whatever, almost. More um, than 60. Amazing. Actually. More than 60 years. And that's 63. 63 actually. years you've been doing this. That's a long time. Yeah. Is, uh, is there... Is there, uh, is there anything out there that you uh, kind of still dream of doing, somebody you'd like to sing with or record with, or any like, man, someday I'd really like to do this? Yeah, there's only one thing I want to do. I want to sing with Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> she is the stuff, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, have you, have you reached out to her people? No, I haven't, but... Uh... All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get to work on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let All me right. know what happened. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is not what I was expecting. <laughs> but it's always, good to know, it's always good to have a dream, isn't it? That's right. You got to have a dream. You got to have a dream. You got to have a dream. <laughs> well, listen, congratulations again. We're going to get back to music. The uh, new record, once again, is called Prick of the Litter. The ever irreverent and hardworking and fun Delbert McClinton. Welcome back to E-Town. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind the scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>